This video is all about making a collection of personal chalkboards in oak frames with matching erasers. So using white oak here, because I really want this to be a, a rather traditional blackboard that's going to be used for a long time. I mean, any wood would work, however, looking for a final thickness of 5 eighths of an inch, because I found that's a nice thickness for both adults and kids to hold. 3 quarter inch is a little too chunky, and half inch is a little too thin. So 5 eighths is a good size. Now oversizing the wood initially. The final width will be 1 and a quarter inch, however, starting out with 1 and a half inches here to give room to chop some off later. And the size is really determined by the board that's going to be used inside for the chalk finish. The Lexan board measures 8 by 10 inches, and the board will sit in about an eighth of an inch. So you have 1.5 times 2 plus 10 inches, the length of the board, which is 13. So doing a lot of cross-cutting here, and I need two pieces at 11 inches long, and two pieces at 13 inches long for each blackboard. When it comes to making chalkboards, certain materials work better to write on than others once you apply the chalk paint. In the past, I have made rather large blackboards by simply painting on top of plywood. The result is a rather coarse surface, which is not ideal to write on. I mean, it's fine, but not great. So I did a bunch of tests, and my favorite turned out to be Lexan, which gives a nice final finish when writing on. Also tried acrylic, which isn't quite as nice. The legs in here measures 0.93 inches, whereas the acrylic that I was using measured 0.087 inches. And when you think about that you have the table saw cut being 1 eighth of an inch, it's nice to have a board that fits really snugly in there. So the acrylic was a little bit too thin, whereas the leg sand was quite perfect. The other thing that makes a difference when it comes to making a good shock finish is obviously the application, but also sanding first. It's important to scuff up the surface slightly, because it prevents the paint from coming off later as you use it over and over and over again. So 220 sandpaper in all directions on both sides, and then three coats of spray chalk paint. And you definitely get a much better chalk finish when using spray paint as opposed to rolling or painting it on. To join these frames together, using this tenoning jig to create a bridle joint. The thing to focus on with this jig, as well as most other jigs, is obviously set up and getting it right. And these space bars come in really handy here. So if you think about it, the wood is 5 eighths of an inch, which actually equals 3 sixteenths of an inch on one side, 1 quarter of an inch in the middle for the tenon, and 3 sixteenths of an inch on the other side. If you're doing more than one board at the same time, make sure to have all your pieces ready to cut, because every time you set it up, it's just a little bit different and it's hard to recreate exact measurements. So just do everything in one batch and it will go a lot smoother. This is all rather production mode, and the reason for that is because I wanted to have a couple of these boards to give away for Christmas, and also I really like the analog nature of these boards, and I find them super handy to have around, to make notes on, write down measurements, ideas, that kind of thing. When you're working on getting the fit perfectly, make sure to either take off on the mortise or on the tenon part and work with that. Don't work with both. Now dry fitting all the pieces to make sure everything fits together nicely. And it's also nice to pre-sand as well as pre-finish as many of the pieces as possible before assembling, because once you put in the chalk panel, it's really easy to scuff that up. So the order here uh, is a little finicky in order to get a really good result. So sanding all the pieces, going through the grits, 60, 180, and 220. And then at this point, easing the inside edges. And here it's good to determine what will be the inside and what will be the outside. 
The inside will also get the groove for the panel. And make sure to ease the inside edges on both sides. Since you use both sides of the chalkboard, it's not like it's hanging on the wall and only one side is visible and used. So they should both be nice and smooth. Okay, so once the pieces have been sanded, it's time for the first coat of finish. So the pieces are just dry fitted at this point, not glued together. And this is an oil varnish, which adds a really nice rich feel. It's important to not get any finish on the glue lines, obviously. And when finishing these many pieces, it's also nice to transfer some of the varnish into a separate container, so you don't bring dirt and debris back into the main can. Okay, so let's let the finish dry, and I want to thank WD40 for partnering with me on this video and enabling me to make videos like this and sharing them with you guys. So I wanted to take care of something that has really bothered me in the shop lately. Rust! <laughs> Developing on the cast iron planer beds, jointer, and some spots on the table saw bed. To remove the rust, I'm actually using this WD-40 Specialist Rust Remover Soak product, which is designed to be used to soak rusted parts in a container. This is a non-toxic, biodegradable product, which I found to be by far the most effective after doing a couple of tests first. Obviously, I can't soak the entire planer bed here in a container, so what I'm doing is pouring some of the rust remover product on top and then adding some paper towels so it stays on the surface evenly for a while. Then I let it sit, and I, yeah, I should probably let it sit even longer, but it did a really good job, and I was using some steel wool on the area. I moved on to the jointer and the table saw, repeating the process, and it made such a difference. The visible rust is now almost completely gone, and I'm thinking it would be a good idea to repeat this process a couple of times to make it absolutely pristine. And when I was satisfied, I dried it off and applied some regular WD-40 to protect the surface from further rust. So not a big deal to do, but just really nice to pay a little extra attention to take care of any small problems like these before they develop and get worse. And just take care of your shop. But now let's get back to the frames. So once the finish was dried, it was time to cut the groove for the Lexan panels to fit into. And for the mortise side, the short side, it was possible to run through the whole length, because the line fits right into where the mortise is, so you can't see it. On the tenoning side, however, it needed to be dropped into the saw, just to avoid having that visible line on the other side of the board. So dropping it in, running it through, and then turning it around and repeating, just to make sure that the groove is absolutely centered. It's also nice that the first coat of finish has been done, so you don't get any finish into the groove, which wouldn't be great for the glue up, which it is time for now. And it's easy to go a little overboard, I think, on the glue. And yeah, you really don't need that much. Once the panels are together, it's time to trim the sides on the table saw. And it's a lot easier to get super crisp edges doing it this way. Trimming at this point, as opposed to cutting them to size and trying to match everything up perfectly initially. So the final size of these boards measure about 10 by 12 inches. And it's really nice to route the edges and soften them a bit. And then it's time for the final finish. Obviously trying to not get any finish on the chalk panel or anywhere near the chalk panel, but on the sides that are freshly cut and routed. And these boards also got a final finish of tongue oil wax polish applied with steel wool, which made them very, very soft. Now, making an eraser is kind of a nice accessory and rather useful. So I decided to go simple here with matching wood that's cut and routed so it's nice and soft. And for the eraser part, some wool felt. To apply, just using rubber cement. And it's a lot easier to glue the fabric on like this and then trim it with a razor blade as opposed to trying to cut it perfectly and glue it on just right. And the shape of the eraser is also nice because it reaches the corners perfectly. So much nicer than if it was rounded. So yeah, I think these turned out really great and I know we'll get a lot of use out of them. I mean, I would like to keep one in the big shop, one in the small shop, one in the kitchen when you're cooking so you can write down like notes as well as like menus, which is kind of nice. 
Um, I find this to be very kind of tactile to use for adults as well as kids, obviously. I mean, kids may be the first thing people think about when it comes to using chalkboards. However, I think these are primarily really great for creative adults to keep on hand and kind of jot ideas down. So it's like a, a more substantial notepad. It's kind of nice and I really like the analog feel of these. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.